Good morning, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the Shawl Knitter Unplugged. Uh, my name is Sita and I am in South Africa currently. And uh, it's winter. Can you no take note? It's cold. I'm wearing quite a lot of handmade items, which is really gives me so much joy to be able to wear everything. And I'm coming to you today, um, on Monday, I think that's the 1st of July, if I'm not mistaken. Now the year is flying by. And um, yeah, I've, I've been uh, laid up in bed for the past uh, 10 days. Really awful bug that I... Uh, got a virus uh, one of many that are flying around the planet at the moment and knocked me down completely um, very hard thing for me to do just to lie in bed and not do anything but i was so sick that I, I i couldn't i couldn't knit which is really really unusual for me i couldn't do a damn thing i could uh, i just slept passed out woke up Past, I won't give you any of the gory details, but anyway, here I am back on track and happy to be coming to you with another video. Just sort of spontaneously, as it were, I'm just sitting here actually at my loo, hence, I showed you a little overview of what my table looks like with all the different uh, bundles of yarn together for different projects, knitting projects, weaving projects, crochet projects, who knows what, all sorts of stuff. And I am sitting at my loom today and it is a wonderful, lovely little portable Ashford uh, Rigid Heddle loom, a knitter's loom, and gives me great joy to be able to just sit down and create. And I was also very lucky a little while ago to receive a, a lovely gift from a friend of mine who I've um, actually met and come to know from the internet. Um, and she recently sent me a wonderful gift of some gorgeous yarns that she had um, marled on her, her e-spinner lovely lovely colors all sorts of different colors mold together some novelty yarns for some texture and yeah more and more let's reach over there's some very interesting yarns here and that's a lovely thing when you are weaving you can just play around with texture. Oh, this one is so gorgeous. This grey one. I love it. Can't wait to get into that one. And nevertheless, I decided that today we are not lying down anymore. I've already been for a walk very early on today when the sun was shining. Now the sun's not shining anymore, but that's fine. We are cozy here. As you can see next to me, this chimney coming down, there's a little small wood-burning stove here, which I do not have activated yet. It's, uh, it's not that cold, but maybe by this afternoon, I think we're in for a week of weather. Um, I, you know, I can sit here and weave and sit next to the fire, or I've got a little armchair here that I can knit, and so it's my cozy space. So I thought I would just show you a variety of things, um, starting with all the variety of things that I'm wearing. <laughs> um, just give me one second, I've got another thing. I'm back. At least I left you a little view of some, some, some knitted projects. So I uh, will start with my hat that I'm wearing. Excuse the, the hat hair. This is the famous Musselboro. And this is the first one I made for myself. And I'm totally in love with it. Um, it's a smallish size, but it suits me. I've got a small head. That's the inside. I just love the top. I don't really wear it this way um, yet. I mean, I haven't really had it that long, 
but I am not really a fan of a fold up. In fact, a band around my head drives me insane. And that is why I love the muscle bra because it's, it's loose, you know. It doesn't have that uh, pull in at the base. And I've made sure that my inside cover well overlaps. So I wear it like that. And oh, it's a bit high, but I, I like it, you know, it gives me freedom. I've actually got a little ponytail there, so it's uh, keeping that going. And then uh, once I had knitted that one, of course, I knitted another one. Well, I actually owed somebody a present. Um, a friend of mine's son who uh, teaches in Japan uh, bought me a Japanese knitting pattern that I was unable to buy. So I said, uh, what, what, what can I make you? So he asked for a, a, a beanie. So this is his muscle burrow. Also made out of uh, sock wool. I think this is opal sock wool. And it's stripy with the. Uh, I like to make the one side um, very, very much longer than that, you know, so you can play around nicely. This side is completely plain, which is quite interesting too. So you could wear it like that. And I guess. No, you agree. That side is just going to be your plain beanie, which I think is lovely to have that option. And then your other side is going to be this lovely stripy beanie with beautiful, this ox blood red is just such a gorgeous color. So these are the two muscle burrows that I've made so far. I've set aside some yarn to make another one because it's just a lovely project to, to knit. So I will be making that soon. Then um, I would like to show you the sweater that I'm wearing. This is a sweater that I knitted a long time ago. Well, probably about four or five years ago. I really love it. Love it. It's called the Achikochi sweater by oh, could be Noriko. I'll have to check up on that. But it is one of the Japanese designers. And it's just a lovely, you know, it's got a fair amount of um, positive ease. It's knitted out of fingering weight. And it's got this lovely detail across the, the yoke that is gives it the name. Achikochi apparently is the a name of the tiles that are used on the Japanese houses. And the, the, the cuffs are the same. And it's got this lovely, very simple neck. It's just got a rolled neck, which you knit on afterwards. You pick up the stitches and you just knit stocking stitch and just let it roll over. And a very simple, unfinished, shallow um, V, I suppose it were. And yeah, it's, it's light and it's warm. I've got a long sleeve t-shirt underneath it at the moment. Very, very cozy. It's a kind of put on any time. And this is actually, it's a singles, it's a merino singles uh, fingering that I'm using for it. So that's it, goes around the back. I think I have made a couple of these, but um, this is my favorite one. This is my favorite one. I really, really like that. So I'll put that in the, in the show notes so you can see who it's made by. So I guess let's just stick to a little bit of knitting, seeing as I have quite a variety of things. Don't want to confuse everybody. Um, I was asked by um, Irina of Fiber Chats if I'd like to test her first pattern. And I was delighted to be asked. So I immediately sprang into it. It's a lovely lace wrap. And um, I had almost completed it when I realized for various reasons that I should be using a different yarn. It's a long story. Anyway, um, so I'm, I'm about to knit another one. And this is the first one I made. And it is so delightful. It's so beautiful. It's light as air. It's called Sweet Surrender Wrap. If you're looking for it, it's super easy. It's like a four row repeat of lace which is like or eight rows it's, it's so easy and you never do anything on the wrong side so 
there it is it's sections of this lovely lace which as you can see is opened out so beautifully in um, in the blocking and in between that are sections of a single strand of mohair in a stocking stitch pattern with um, some eyelets on either side now the pattern is written for lace weight um, in this lace section the next one I'm doing will be lace weight in that section, but this is fingering weight and it's worked very well. It's really, I don't see that uh, makes any difference whatsoever. Probably it'll be much lighter, but this is as it is. So extremely light. I did actually extend the pattern a little bit just to give it some more length because I did have um, quite a lot of this fingering weight. So I did another repeat, an extra repeat which gives it a bit of about 40 centimeters in length extra and it's nice and wide and it's this long 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 straightforward rectangular wrap around throw on I don't know if it goes with my jersey but nevertheless it's gorgeous it's absolutely gorgeous so there you go Irina well done I love your wrap and I think I'm going to be making a few of them so this one is ready, it's blocked and um, soon it will uh, go to its new home. So that is it for the knitting today. Yeah, the other things that I have to show you, I thought I might as well show you some weaving. I'm sitting here at the loom, I've got one beautiful scarf that was ordered by a friend of mine. Um, and it's in this lovely bag from India. Just, you know, this is a sorry scraps. Everything you buy in India comes in a little bag like this. It's just totally amazing. And it has a little drawstring so you can, you know, tie it up. But that's just in the shop, no packets. Recycle sorry. This is a sort of chiffon, very lightweight, very handy little things. I love them. I keep them and I gift them with gifts to my friends. So this is the, the scarf, which really does go with what I'm wearing, that I made for um, my friend who had ordered it from me. She kind of gave me carte blanche. She knows my colors. I know her colors. I showed her the beginning of what I was doing, and she said, just keep going. So that's what I did. I made this lovely, lovely long scarf. There's something about a woven scarf that is just so different from a knitted one. You know, I wore mine the other day and I was just amazed at how lovely and cozy it is. So this one is um, completely wool. It's all made out of merino wool. Um, the weft and the warp. And then it's got a very short tasseling. But it's very lightweight. It's fingering yarn. It's lightweight and it's cozy and it's not miles of fabric. That's what I actually do like about these things is that they're warm and wearable and they don't fall in your food or, you know, you have to sort of get your arms into them. Um, but they keep you nice and cozy around your neck. So this is uh, ready to go. This was quite fun, quite fun to do. I was very, very, very inspired and I got into using so many colors in this sort of a chick pattern which uh, I'm quite proud of I must say you know I'm a very new weaver and uh, when you're working with lots of colors um, yarn management on weaving is quite different to on knitting because you've got to be really careful that you you put away your ends very nicely you know um, as there's no seams or anywhere to hide them so that was uh, that was a great experience. It was before I was ill, and I was very inspired on this particular day. And I was thinking of my friend as I was making it, so it's here in her little bag, and she's going to receive that very soon. Something else that I have here that's woven is um, a lovely, very lightweight cotton um, scarf in a sort of denim theme 
I am trying to include some more masculine inspired objects because I sell my work and um, you know it's always for the ladies so I, I really feel that this is a lovely scarf for a man it's got some green in it too and it's uh, faded denim and a very very light gray and a bit of lime green which which really just blends in so nicely and uh, as I said it's cotton it's very light it's got a very nice texture design in the weave which I'm quite proud of really enjoy playing around getting some different effects I think that's turned out very very nicely I must make another one of these I think and um, there it is my woven denim scarf so um, yeah um, I'm going to weave today another scarf and you know it's great fun because you just take the yarn and I, I'm not much of a planner <laughs> in most things that I do I'm very um, uh, I don't know impulsive is not really the right word because that just means I just kind of do stuff you know but like while I'm doing stuff other things happen which lead me down a different path and 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 that is where I'm at with color and look at this here I don't know if you can actually see this green I just you know I had this lovely very bright green actually and I thought let me just throw this in here but anyway it is in there whether you can see it or not that is that I have also still been doing some crochet and you can see behind me here these are two panels of a crochet blanket that I'm busy doing in this lovely all my scraps it's using up all my scraps lovely chevron crochet I, I must say I think um, chevron crochet is my favorite type of crochet you know it's it really gives instant results and it's lovely to see and this was just a let me try out this pattern and then I loved it and then this is how many stitches I had this is what I mean about impulsive so I went to um, actually it was a quilt guild meeting with a friend of mine and they had a show and tell of any craft on that day so there were lots of people there with um, with crochet and I discovered this uh, well not discovered but I saw all these lovely chevron blankets and there was somebody there who was willing to teach us how to do it so I said let me go let's do it so I I had some yarn with me and um, I think somebody lent me a crochet hook and I put on X amount of chains I think about 60 odd and off I went uh, to learn the crochet <clears throat> the chevron stitch the most important thing that I was learning is how to get these super duper straight edges now that that is a thing of beauty because in crochet for me because I'm not a natural crocheter I um, oh, just look at this lovely purple and lime green I get such joy from this look at it I I find the edges to be very sort of untidy because I don't know how to do them properly but we were taught this is what we were taught how to make the super straight edge and and off I went and, and I fell in love with it and I thought okay here we go I'm crocheting something so I just kept on going kept on going kept on going and I thought well it could be a scarf I thought well yeah that could happen but I'm gonna run out soon and I don't want it to stop so I decided to make a blanket out of these panels which are um, yeah I'm measuring it here uh, it's uh, 12 inches or 30 centimeters wide which is actually quite a nice scarf with quite frankly it could you know they could all individually be nice scarves quite easily <laughs> while I'm making the blanket nevertheless so I decided that yes this would indeed become a blanket here's the piece I'm currently working on 
and um, whoops, as you can see, it's very different to the piece that I'm wearing, but that's how the blanket is. And there's a bit of mohair thrown in there, and oh, it's just lovely. This is pre-blocking. Look at it. It's very, it, it pulls in sort of like a corrugation, but once you block it, it flattens out absolutely gorgeously. And I'm mad about it. So I pick that up every now and again whenever I um, feel inspired to. And I normally also take it to our weekly crochet group, um, which is not only a crochet group, but um, it's, it's an easy project for me to, to do. So that is using up all my scraps fantastically. And, you know, so that's what I mean um, when I say I'm quite impulsive. I might decide to, you know, nothing is um, a waste or I never make a sample and then that's it. I can like finish it and that's my sample and I can look at it. It has to become something. So everything becomes something. <laughs> so I was just trying out the stitch, learning it and loved it and off I went. And the colors, well, I just dip into my bag. I've got so many scraps and um, I'm really enjoying it. But look at that. I mean, I could go out like this today if it didn't have all these things hanging on it. And who would care anyway? So that I think is all I really had to show you today. Oh, it's very cozy around my neck. I love it. Um, I'm using, by the way, um, which I think is a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. It's a very simple one with a nice uh, soft handle. 3.5 and the wool is fingering weight wool. So, um, I haven't been doing much in the past 10 days, uh, except moaning and groaning and uh, feeling terrible. So, I'm now super inspired to, like, I just want to do everything, you know. I'm also knitting a really lovely, huge uh, Westness, West Knits shawl that is a commission. I'm not going to show it to you. It's impossible to show a huge West Knit shawl when it's on the needles, okay, because it's all squashed up together and impossible to see so i'm near the end I'm, I'm on the last i'm on the border i never like to say i'm near the end because like i don't know seven nine hundred stitches who knows how many in the rows but i'm getting there i'm nearly there and that's going to be lovely and um yeah i've been watching quite a lot of different podcasts and netflix and Interesting movies, actually. I've uh, become a bit of a movie watcher. It's a nice break from being a podcast watcher. But I have I have a podcast uh, recommendation for you today. Um, as somebody who I discovered a while back, maybe last year, I think. And her name is Sedgi Fields. I'll put the link below. She's this amazingly creative, young crafter um, a brilliant a brilliant woman and uh, she's a student and when I discovered her podcast she was um, she was living in Japan which made it doubly interesting to me she speaks Japan she knits from Japanese um, Japanese patterns she's not Japanese as far as I can make out but she's young and she's so funky. I mean, she really can put the funk into knitting and to just like, yeah, she's lovely and very adventurous. So I'd like to recommend uh, Sedgy Fields to you. Go and take a look at her podcast. She's quite regular with what she does. As I say, she loves vintage patterns. She loves Japanese patterns. She's always showing them and knitting them. And she actually was extremely helpful um, uh, with the same Japanese pattern that my friend bought me, who I'm knitting the hat for, she has uh, helped me with that as well, which was really great fun. So uh, if you don't know her, go and take a look. And then um, Fiber Chat just had a lovely interview with uh, Jochi Locatelli. And um, 
yeah, she was also on this lovely re um, Mayak retreat in Italy, which I would die to go to something like that, but that looked like great fun. So I've been, yeah, I've been keeping myself busy with uh, quite a lot of things. I've been trying to read, but you know, reading hasn't been possible for me. I haven't been able to focus too much on that. I've also had quite a lot of work to do um, in regard with my India tours. Um, which the first one is coming up in October and that takes months of planning in advance. In fact, from now is a very busy time for me, you know, doing all my bookings and making sure everything's in place because, you know, you don't just arrive in India and uh, jump on a train, for example, um, or, you know, get the accommodation you want. Things are very booked up very far in advance and one has to make sure you get everything done. So um, I'm feeling very positive about that. It all seems to be happening quite nicely. It, look, it's nothing new. I've been doing it for 11 years. But every time, you know, because I'm so far away in South Africa and everything's getting done in India, while I'm not there, my micromanaging demon um, it tends to get a bit anxious. But uh, not really. Things are going well. All plans are coming along. And yeah, I've just got a few months ahead of me in uh, this lovely home that I'm looking after uh, with my lovely fireplace and it's winter and it's knitting and it's wool and weaving and crochet and I'm a happy chap. So thank you so much for coming along today and um, taking a look at all my bits and pieces. Um, as I said, I do sell my work. If you're interested in anything that I show, you can email me dm me go to my instagram by the way i have an instagram page called tribal bling t-r-i-b-a-l-b-l-i-n-g that is for my knitting and for my india tours which you might also be interested in is um mystic india tours uh, I am planning a craft tour in India next year, which I'm very excited about. I hope it will come off next year. Things take a lot of planning, um, but it looks like we're on the road to getting to the final stages of this becoming a reality. It's been in the planning for a few years. So if you would like to come to India and uh, participate in a very colorful uh, craft retreat in Rajasthan, uh, hit me up and I'll put you on my list. Okay, oh yes, and please do subscribe if you're not subscribed and like this episode and uh, happy summer as I guess most of you are there in summer. I'm very glad I'm not in summer. I'm not really such a hot summer person, you know. I, I spent a lot of my life in summer in hot, humid, subtropical places. It didn't matter to me growing up. I don't know, everything was the same. But now I prefer some more temperature, temperate temperatures, climates, you know, not so much sweating. All right then, take care, have a wonderful day and thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.